And now we will present the statewide issues on the ballot, all of which involve a constitutional amendment. All three issues are fairly complex, so we strongly recommend that you check them out before you go to the polls on November 3rd. In your program, you will find um, links to, the, um, to look at these issues. One is the Ohio Secretary of State website, and the other is Ballotpedia, and this is something that um, actually Denny found for us, and it was, it's a nonpartisan website, and it seems to have pretty good descriptions of the pros and cons. And you can Google these issues to find as many websites as you want. Since this event is being recorded, those of you out in TV land do not have access to this uh, Fairborn uh, Meet the Candidates Night flyer. So uh, just a quick note, go to the Ohio Secretary of State website, click on Legislation and Ballot Issues, and then the Ballot Board. For Ballotpedia.org, click on State, find Ohio, then Ballot Measures, and look for our three issues. For those of you who don't have computers, Marlene has a stack. Marlene is over here. She has a stack of the complete the package, the issue itself, as you'll see it on the ballot, the pros and the cons. So you can uh, grab a, a stack when you these go are, back. These are from the Secretary of State. From the Secretary of State website. So I'm going to read the issue itself, and then Gail Beebe is going to come up here, and she's going to read the argument um, for the issue, and then Den and Gail is um, a Green County Tea Party uh, board planning uh, planning board member, and Denny Crouch is the president of the uh, Green County Tea Party, and he's going to read the argument against the issue. So, Title One or Issue One is the title is redistricting. And I'm just going to read most of what it says on here. And I want you all to stay awake, and I don't want anybody snoring in the back. <laughs> OK, the proposed amendment would end the partisan process for drawing Ohio's House and Senate districts and replace it with a bipartisan process with the goal of having district boundaries that are more compact and politically competitive. Ensure a transparent process by requiring public meetings Establish a bipartisan Ohio redistricting commission composed of seven members, including the governor, the auditor, and the secretary of state, and four appointed members. That's basically what it says. And now, Gail's going to read the book. Okay. Um, what I'm going to read off to you is prepared by Senators Keith Faber and Joe Givoni and Representatives Kirk Shuri and Mike Curtin. Um, vote yes on issue one. A yes vote will send a message that voters are tired of politics as usual and create a fair, bipartisan, and transparent redistricting process that will make politicians accountable to voters. Currently, it is far too easy for politicians to gerrymander their way into safe seats. Voting yes on issue one will make sure state legislative districts are drawn to be more competitive and compact and ensure that no district plan should be drawn to favor or disfavor a political party. Voting yes will establish fair and balanced standards for drawing state legislative districts, including that no district plan should favor a political party. Voting yes on issue one will help keep our communities together by requiring that a district plan split as few counties, municipalities, and townships as possible. Voting yes on issue one will, will require bipartisan support of a seven member commission to adopt a new state legislative districts for 10 years and it will create the bipartisan commission that is required to broadcast and conduct all of its meetings in public. And it will require the bipartisan commission to share a plan for state legislative districts with the public and seek public input before adopting a new plan. Okay, Denny. This is the argument against the issue one and is prepared by the Ohio Ballot Board as required by the Ohio Revised Code, Section 3505. 
The current process for drawing new legislative districts is adequate and has served Ohio well for many years. The gerrymandering that results from partisan control is not a bad process because it leads to one party control of government and voters can know who to hold responsible. Competitive districts are not a virtue because politicians have to spend so much time campaigning for re-election are not able to do as much legislative work. Even when the apportionment board is controlled by a single party, it is still representative of the people's will since the members of the board, most whom, of whom are statewide officials, were elected by popular vote. The board has been controlled exclusively by both of the major parties. So neither side of the political spectrum can be seen as having a long-term hold on redistricting. Historically, their control doesn't last forever. The current process can be trusted to maintain fair district lines. A no vote maintains the status quo. Issue two is prohibiting monopolies.
private return or investment for self-interested investors or any corporations they form. Point, point of order, who prepared the comment? Does it say on there? Sometimes they don't say on there. Oh, I'm sorry. This was prepared by Senator Keith Faber and Representative Ryan Smith, Mike Curtin, and David Leland. Um, also, they said that 19 states have constitutional provisions banning monopolies. It's time for Ohio to become the 20th state. Do you have a, a, an author of that one or not? I'm not negative. Oh, yes. You do have, okay. Yeah, I said it before. In Ohio, I would say that. Uh, the argument against state uh, issue two again is prepared by the Ohio ballot board as required by the Ohio revised code section. The primary reason for that, as I understand it, is the Ohio Revised Court, if there was a group that came forward to give the negative on it, that would be published. If no group necessarily comes forward, then the Ohio Revised Code requires the Ohio Ballot Board to publish that negative comment or con, and that's what this is. The basic structure of the, and this is the argument against State Issue 2, the basic structure of the people's ability to amend the Ohio Constitution by initiative petition dates to 1912. The status quo is adequate. House Joint Resolution 4 attempts to limit the potential personal financial benefits to the donors who pay for the signature gathering activities sometimes used to place ballot issues before the voters. There is no reason to prevent anyone from amending the Ohio Constitution, even if it is for selfish, personal benefit. <laughs> I'm reading. I'm reading. <laughs> there is no reason for anyone from amending the Ohio Constitution, even if it's for selfish, personal benefit, so long as the people support it by a majority vote. <laughs> Some opponents of House Joint Resolution 4 say that the language is too vague and might unintentionally preclude future public policy considerations from being brought by the initiated constitutional amendment process. If adopted, House Joint Resolution 4 would prohibit from taking effect any proposed constitutional amendment adopted at the general election on November 3, 2015 that creates a monopoly, oligopoly, or cartel for the sale, distribution, or other use of any federal Schedule I controlled substance. If the people of Ohio want to allow the creation of a monopoly or cartel, they should be given the opportunity to do so. <laughs> and so no barriers should stand in their way. Argument against. <laughs> Do I, do, I have to, do I have to go to confession for having you read that? <laughs> okay, let's go to issue three. This is the one. Okay, this is um, issue three legalizes um, marijuana for personal use and for medicinal use and establishes monopoly. The proposed amendment, I'm just, it's, an, it's, it's a page and a half, so you will thank me for just reading the highlights of most of them. Okay. okay. The proposed amendment would endow exclusive rights for commercial marijuana growth, cultivation, and extraction to self-designated landowners who own 10 predetermined parcels of land, and it states the counties they're in. Permit retail sale of marijuana, of recreational marijuana at approximately 1,100 locations statewide. Legalize the production of marijuana-infused products, and you know what they are, you hear them on TV all the time. Allow each person, 21 years age or older, to purchase, grow, possess, use, transport, and share over half a pound of marijuana or its equivalent in marijuana-infused products at a time. Prohibit any law or state law, any local or state law, including zoning laws, unless the area is, is zoned exclusively residential as of January 1. I think what this means is if, on Jan if after January 1, you build a residential area and there's already a marijuana facility there, it has to stay. It can't be rezoned for no marijuana. I think that's what that means. 
Create a special tax rate limited to 15% on gross revenue of each marijuana growth cultivation and extraction facility and marijuana product manufacturing facility and a special tax rate limited to 5% on gross revenue of, all, of each retail marijuana store. Revenues from the tax go to a municipal and township government fund, a strong county fund, and the Marijuana Control Commission Fund, which is, um, it limits the, the proposed amendment limits the ability of the legislature and local governments from regulating the manufacture, sales, distribution, and use of marijuana and marijuana products. Creates a new state government agency, Marlene will love that, called the Marijuana Control Commission with limited authority to regulate the industry, which is comprised of seven Ohio residents appointed by the governor. Appointed, not elected. Take it away. Uh, go for it. I'm just to try to, try to add a little bit there to uh, what she just said. Uh, the information I'm going to present to you is submitted by a committee in charge of the initiative petition, Barbara Gold, Taylor uh, Duschel, Duschel, Robert Duterne, and Rosemary Robinson, and Patrick McHenry. Um, it uh, authorizes nonprofit dispensaries for medical marijuana, which Ohio doctors could prescribe to treat patients with cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, sickle cell anemia, or other debilitating diseases, children with epilepsy, and veterans with post traumatic stress disorder. It establishes an industry that will create tens of thousands of jobs in Ohio. It permits, regulates, and taxes marijuana sales by licensed growers and retailers. It will eventually generate more than $550 million annually in tax revenue, 85% of which will go directly to local governments, which may spend these funds on public safety, economic development, road bridge repair, and, and other infrastructure improvements. Um, I saw the word may spend these funds on all these things. Okay. Issue 3 creates an independent commission that will regulate the growth and sale of marijuana and issue licenses to these 10 initial growth facilities. Um, it will license additional growth facilities as necessary. The initial 10 uh, license limit is consistent with recommended best practices, avoids problems other states with more growth sites that they've encountered in maintaining quality, ensuring safety, tracking product, and collecting taxes. Contrary to unfounded charges, the market established by issue three does not constitute a monopoly, cartel, or oligopoly, and the commission's authority prevents any form of developing these charges have been trumped up by the legislature, which failed for decades to vote on legalizing marijuana, not even for medicinal purposes, and now opposes spending tax revenue from issue three uh, bypass it and go directly to local governments, replacing the funding that the legislature previously slashed. This is the official argument against issue three, that it was signed by several. Eric Berkland, President, Ohio Manufacturers Association. Reverend Dr. David Cobb, Pastor, Emmanuel Baptist Church. Bill Denahan, CEO, ADAMHS Board, Cuyahoga County. Jack Fisher, Executive Vice President, Ohio Farm Bureau Federation. Gordon Go, President and CEO, Ohio Council of Retail Merchants, and lastly, Elise Spriggs, Drug Free Action Alliance. The statement. Issue three cements in the Constitution a billion dollar marijuana monopoly for a small group of wealthy investors. Issue three gives them exclusive rights to commercial marijuana profits in Ohio and insulates them from any business competition or act of the legislature. 
The investors who wrote Issue 3 set their own preferential tax rates directly into the Constitution, rates that cannot be changed by the legislature, like those on beer, wine, and tobacco. Issue 3 puts our children at risk. Issue 3 legalizes marijuana-infused products like candy and cookies, which often have dangerously high levels of THC and are highly tempting to children, including very young children. High limits on personal possession of marijuana will result in broad exposure of our children and underage high school and college students to marijuana. Issue 3 will flood Ohio with marijuana. Proponents imply that Issue 3 allows small amounts of marijuana for recreational use. In reality, it allows every adult 21 or over in the state the right to possess as much as nine ounces, more than half a pound, of marijuana, or about 500 average-sized marijuana joints. In addition, every adult could possess four flowering marijuana plants at home. <laughs> Issue three allows 1,159 retail marijuana stores. That's more locations than Starbucks or McDonald's and nearly three times the number of state liquor stores. Republican and Democrat elected officials, children health advocates, hospitals, doctors, addiction counselors, faith leaders, mental health professionals, parents, educators, law enforcement officials, farmers, Chambers of Commerce and leading business groups all urge a no vote on issue three. And lastly, it says, stop the marijuana monopoly, keep marijuana away from our children. Vote no on issue three. I know that was a lot of reading to listen to, but I think we, we are driving home the point that these are very complex issues and we really need to look at them before you go to the ballot box. So please take a look at those. And now that we have made these issues perfectly clear, <laughs> this concludes the formal portion of the evening and we now invite you to find the candidates and ask your questions and munch a cookie. Thank you, Ellen Stone. Thank you, Pat from the League. Thank you, Floyd. And thank you, Carla. And thank the candidates for coming. And thank you all for coming tonight. And I hope you, I hope that this uh, increased your awareness of the Thank you so much. has also registered a no vote on issue three.